We're in 2023, and it's pretty obvious we're going to be talking a lot about Nintendo Switch 2, both before it's announced, when it's announced, after it's announced, all the various games that are going to be coming, and who knows, we have some hope about a Metroid Prime or Metroid Prime 2, 3, you know, Echoes, Corruption announcement in the next Nintendo Direct, because I do suspect sometime in the first three months of this year, we will get a Nintendo Direct with hopefully some Metroid goodness, and we're going to be all on top of that, but see... Coming into this year, it's no surprise that there's a lot of talk around a brand new system because there's been a lot of chatter in general heading into this year. Dev kits being out there, right? As reported on for people like Andy Robinson, who came out and said the dev kits are already in developers' hands from rumored presentations at things like Gamescom. And oh, by the way, the really funny thing is Nintendo themselves even commenting on it. Granted, they were trying to deny some of the rumors, they didn't deny specific parts. It was kind of weird. They were very, very generalized. But you know what? Nintendo commenting on rumors at all is already pretty shocking. But here we are entering into 2023, and we feel like we have a grasp on what this system is going to be. And now, if Dr. Sirkin Toto is correct, and if you know who that is, oh, man, you'll understand why this is a bigger deal. Man, it sounds like we have some pretty lofty and maybe some understandable expectations for Nintendo Switch 2 in 2024. Now, who is Dr. Circuntoto? Well, he is an industry analyst, but unlike a lot of other industry analysts, because you can, you know, look at people like Michael Pachter, he's also an industry analyst. He's not like the rest. You see, Dr. Circuntoto not only attends all of Nintendo's financial meetings, he's also a very well-connected person in the industry. I'll give you an example. He's leaked two literal Zelda announcements in the last three years. Like, the man knows what's going on. He is very connected. So when he speaks, it's important that we pay attention. Now, as an analyst and making beginning of year quote-unquote predictions, it's important to note that, hey, the man doesn't get everything right, especially when you're just working in the realm of predictions. But as you're about to see, he had direct knowledge of the Nintendo Switch Pro. So when he's talking about Nintendo Switch 2, while he's going to frame it as speculation because he doesn't want anyone to get in trouble, we have to pay attention. Now, he actually brings up a really good point as well for all of you people out there who think Nintendo is not making an iterative system this time around. Where did he say all this stuff? Well, he said it to GameIndustry.biz, and here are his exact quotes. The time is finally here for a Switch successor, even though I can say a pro model did exist, and certain developers were already working with the dev kit for it. I believe the next hardware will drop in 2024 for four hundred dollars he's talking usd so 399.99 there is a high chance the games will cost more to seventy dollars the next system is also likely to be an iteration rather than a revolution nintendo might add some bells and whistles read that as gimmick to the device but it will be similar to the current switch now that's all fine and dandy, but Dr. Circuit Total wasn't done. He brought up a key point that I think a lot of people who are in denial and think the next system is going to be a home console. Here is something that pretty much destroys that argument. And because there is Pokemon. And Pokemon is associated with handheld gaming. There is no way on earth Nintendo will drop the portability feature for their next big thing. And he's not wrong. And Pokemon is massive in Japan, which, by the way, is Nintendo's second largest video game market outside of the United States. And Nintendo kind of owns that market. And that market massively prefers handheld portable systems for their on-the-go lifestyle. So... Everything is really adding up that this is going to be an iterative system. It's not going to be revolutionary, right? They're not going to be trying to reinvent the wheel. But Nintendo's hope is obviously, hey, we get this new product out there. It's got a few new bells and whistles. And then on top, we just have that consistent 
software support that we've only ever had for Nintendo Switch because before we used to have to split our software between two platforms. Now that we put everything on one, we think we could just literally strike gold a second time around, especially while the concept for Switch hasn't gone anywhere. Everyone's copying it. There's portable PCs everywhere, and yet Switch is still dominating in the sales. So it does seem that even the top analysts that gives us information on Nintendo, even directly from investors' meetings, is basically saying, yeah, this thing is coming. He's like strongly, he's planting his flag in the ground and saying, 2024, this is coming. It will be iterative. It is going to be a Switch-like device. It will cost 400 and the games are going to be 70 bucks. Now, that is a lot to chew on. The $400 price point isn't something new. It's been speculated for quite some time. We haven't really had anyone be this emphatic about it, uh, but that is pretty interesting. Now, the $70 games, I think that is an expectation that comes from the fact that Tears of the Kingdom was $70. I'm not sure Nintendo's going to go $70 bucks across the board. Like, I can see you know a Kirby and Forgotten Land 2, right, being $70, bucks, but then another side-scrolling Kirby game or spinoff being $60, right? I, I can see there being some... Price discrepancies, of course, maybe that's just wishful thinking, and Nintendo will just legitimately do $50 across the board. I mean, the competition pretty much did, did I say $50, $70 across the board. So again, I, we'll have to wait and see what Nintendo does with the pricing. Like, all future sports games, I wouldn't like, I, you know, I'd prefer those stay at 60 and not 70 but... Again, we have no idea what Nintendo's going to do with the pricing. I just find this to be fascinating. You throw the Pokemon argument in there as well. Look, the Switch is literally Nintendo's most successful generation of all time. And they've had some pretty big successes. The Wii, the DS, obviously the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the day, the Game Boy. They've had some really big successes. And Switch tops them all, not just with software having moved over $1.2 billion, probably over $1.3, $1.4 billion by the time things are all said and done. Maybe even $1.5 billion. That would just be crazy. You're going to end up having this thing sell $140 million, maybe $150 million plus systems. And... And look, Nintendo's not going to just abandon that market. That has such a strong demand. Think about how much the games are selling. Look at the sales of Mario Wonder. Look at the sales of Tears of the Kingdom. The market demand is so damn strong still for what the Switch is. It would be foolish to just abandon that market without giving it another device. Again, I know some people are going to act like that's not what Nintendo does, but every time they've had a massively successful system, they've released an iterative sequel system. But some people might know that while Nintendo has released an iterative sequel system every time, the sequel system has always failed to come close to the success of the prior system. You can just look to the Wii U being the sequel to the Wii. You can look to the 3DS selling half as well as the original DS. You can look to the Super Nintendo selling, you know, 20 million less than the original Nintendo Entertainment System. So I get it. I understand. The only thing that really had a close to really good successful, you know, one to the next would be in Game Boy to Game Boy Advance, right? That was a pretty good uh, transition. But here's the thing. It's a little different because, as I noted, Nintendo is now making all of their games on one platform. And one of the big things Nintendo has had an issue with, even go to, like, the launch of the 3DS. The big launch game for Nintendo on 3DS was Steel Diver. Like, it, come on. Uh, they clearly you know, had an issue getting software out. The next biggest game was a, a remake or a remaster in Ocarina of Time 3D. They didn't really have anything until Mario Kart 7 dropped, and that was like six, seven months after the system came out. That's not going to be a problem anymore because all of Nintendo's focus is on a solitary system. And when that happens, as we saw with Switch, you get many, many years, even the pandemic year, of a bunch of consistent releases, like the lowest release amount they had was like five games in one year. Uh, hello, Xbox and Sony aren't even getting five out in a year. And that was Nintendo's lowest year. They had years with 12, 14, 15 games coming out that Nintendo published and paid for. So I'm just throwing out there that Nintendo seems to know what the hell they're doing, and I don't think this is going to stop. And I know some people might go, well, with how well the Switch is doing, why won't they just keep it going for another couple of years? And the reasoning is because you don't want to milk the system till nobody wants it. You don't want to let the gravy train go. Uh, if you let the gravy train go, it is very hard to follow it up with another successful platform. And I know some of you guys will go, well, they can just revolutionize and reinvent the wheel again. 
Though there's a lot of external pressures against that. The Pokemon company will be deathly scared if you're going to have to reinvent the wheel all over again when they've seen so much success in the handheld space for so long. And no, Nintendo isn't going to go back to having a home console and then keep the Switch going because then they're splitting their development resources up again to make games go across different platforms. Uh, that's just not something Nintendo is likely very interested in doing. Again, it just it goes back to the issues Nintendo was having before the Switch ever came out. A problem, the Nintendo Switch being a hybrid device, literally solved. On top of that, Nintendo, while well, they have all these you know, handheld PC things coming out, they really don't have any competition. Can, can we just be completely honest? PlayStation's not doing what they're doing. Microsoft isn't doing what they're doing. Nobody is being able to find the market like Nintendo has with this device. Oh, and by the way, Nintendo's always had pretty good success with handhelds in general. So why would they even go away from their most successful market? All they've done is make that market even more premium. And if you release a $400 handheld that could also be a home console that's playing games and, you know, some games in 4K and 60 FPS and all, you're literally just entering another premium product into the marketplace and increasing how much money you're making off of said product. I mean, look, Switch was not a cheap, Switch OLED is not a cheap handheld device compared to Nintendo's prior systems. And yet look at those sales, right? They're getting more money than ever out of handheld. That is amazing for Nintendo. They're not going to go away from that. They clearly know what they're doing. But you know what? This next device is Shintura Furukawa's first attempt to launch a brand, brand new product. So let's see what happens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video.